Now I thought we'd start this video off looking at something that you don't see very often. This paladin has played Lanessa and there are a lot of buffs here. An awful lot of buffs. 14 attack, 20 health, divine shield, taunt. This looks pretty scary. But hey, I'm a Reno lock, right? So much flexibility available to me here. And with Zola and Bran getting, you know, two more copies of Enzoth back to your hand, it's just pure, utter value. And he can cycle through his AoE and his board clear effects. It doesn't matter to me. Because... When you can play ends off three times in a game, you know you've won. So, third go with ends off, three sludge belches, three mistresses. Don't you just love the symmetry here? That's a beautiful board. And We've seen one equality, but hey, if you've got the second equality, sure, go ahead. Why not? Because I've still got Reno. I've got Gul'dan. We've seen Lynessa. What more could he have? Well, that's Galvadon. And now he's looking for some value here. Divine Shield, hey, that's pretty good. Plus attack's pretty cool too. Oh no, you've already cast Divine Shield. Plus three health. Hey, and Taunt. So an 8-8 Taunt with a Divine Shield. Seems okay. Okay, he wants to do it all over again. Well, you see, I could just siphon solve that. But knowing that he's returned it back to hand, maybe I want to save that Siphon Soul for his second go. So, at least for now, I fancy getting value on Gul'dan. So we kill off the Malganis. And we could play Gul'dan here. But we can just play a Geist and a Demon. Why not? Just waiting for him to play. Oh no! Okay, was waiting for him to play Galvadon again, and we would have had the Siphon Soul. Fair enough. Okay, so that was just a little showcase of something pretty cool there with Lanessa and Galvadon on the Wild Mode ladder. Not something that you see very often. But okay, let's move on to the focus of today's video. Today, I'm playing Even Shaman, and um, specifically, it's a deck that I saw Control playing on YouTube um, on one of his videos. It's Even Shaman with Elementals. And this is my first time playing this kind of deck. Uh, previously, I would just play um, I was playing all dragons, even Shaman, which you can see on the right-hand side. Um, the elemental version is a fair bit different. So, um, the elemental version does not play crackles. That's pretty. That's pretty key because crackles can give you those surprise lethals that nobody expects. Um, so we don't have crackles. Um, what else do we not have? Uh, the Totem Carver is not in the Elemental version because our focus is not on building a board of totems. Uh, we're more focused on playing Elementals. Um, you'd be pleased to know that the 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven is still in the deck, um, or at least uh, one copy of it. Um, and we have a lack of the Lich King and no Sea Giants in the Elemental version. Um, they are replaced by Grumble, Hagatha and, uh, and Kalamos. So that's that's a pretty interesting switch there. Does Kalimos provide more value than a Lich King or a Sea Giant? Uh, does Grumble provide more value than the Lich King? Um, these are interesting questions. 
the elemental version really does focus also on jades, getting uh, sort of jade golems summoned onto the board. You'll notice that jade spirit is in this deck. Um, it's an, it's a four cost card that initially can seem a little bit underpowered if you play it on turn four um, because what do you often get you get a two three and a one one minion um, which for four mana doesn't seem especially great but the power of jade spirit in this deck occurs when you combo it with let's say grumble and then you can replay the jade spirit for one cost and maybe by that point in the game you've developed some other jade minions and your jade golems grow a bit more uh, so yes this this deck uh, the elemental version can sometimes feel a little bit slower um, without the crackles for instance uh, with with some initial cards like jade spirit that can be quite slow um, but it's all about value so let's have a look at this deck in action on the wild mode ladder this is my first attempt at playing this deck so do forgive any misplays and we're going up against a Murloc Mage. Now this is something else that you don't see very often <laughs> on the ladder. Particularly on wild mode anyway. Murloc Mage. Hmm. Now one thing that we are pretty good at with this deck is um, clearing away low health minions. Um, this deck still plays Devolve. It still plays Maelstrom Portal. Now, Maelstrom Portal, I think, is incredibly an incredibly important card in our hand, and we don't we don't want to use it until we're sure we can get good value from it. And I don't think that last turn was a good turn to play it. Um, but now we see a board with three minions, and. It seems pretty good here. That Molten Giant, with 30 health, it appears as if we're never going to be able to play it, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> uh, but hey, it's there if we need it, right? It's there if he suddenly gets a board and starts whacking our face. We'll be able to play the Molten Giant. Um, Fire Elemental, there's a card that I've not played for quite some time. And that three damage burst really coming in handy here. There's Grumble. Hmm. So, we want to save Grumble for... The right occasion, where we can get some value with something brought back to our hand and they can get replayed for one. So for now, a 4 mana 7, oh, okay, 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven would have to do, but he decided he'd had enough. Fair enough. Okay. So... This looks like another even shaman who is unlikely to be playing um, <laughs> the jade elemental version. We're going to assume he's playing the more regular version of even shaman, the one with the crackles. So, I was tempted to keep jade lightning. It can be pretty good against something like a totem golem or if you've got spell power on board, it's really good against thing from below. But hey, we still get a Jade Lightning. We have turned our curse into our strength. Okay. So we've got a bit of a curve going forward. We have Totem Golem for turn two. Uh, turn three, I guess, will just be the Hero Power. And then we'll need to think about turn four, because we're going to have some choices. Uh, Jade Lightning, Thing From Below, uh, Jade Spirit. It's good to have options, right? It's good to have options. Okay. 
Kelly has a very interesting use of the eel there. He's wanting to weaken the totem golem. And that is a testament to the power of totem golem. Um, with four health, it's really, really hard to take down. Um, you're usually going to get at least two trades with it, maybe even three, depending on what kind of minions your opponent's playing early. So the healing totem there was actually really good for us. It's going to mean that even if he kills my taunt totem, um, his eel is not going to be able to kill off the totem golem. Okay, so it is turn four, and we do have these options available to us, but Jade Lightning just seems just seems sensible, right? Four damage spell for a four health minion. Seems reasonable. Uh, except his his four health minion cost two, and my four damage spell cost four. Uh, again, the value of Totem Golem. Pretty good. Because you can make the argument that the overload effect isn't terribly relevant, providing you've got something to do on that following turn. Okay, so we could use the eel here to get through the taunt totem. And then we could trade our totem golem into the 2-3, perhaps? Okay, we get Spell Power Totem, not especially useful here in this situation. Um, I think I would have valued a Healing Totem, maybe. And Thing From Below is looking pretty good here. Unfortunately, we can't play the Flame Tongue Totem as well. But that's fine. Two Jade Spirits in our hand, and uh, at this point, oh, they're looking a little bit slow to play, right? We're spending four mana, and what are we getting from that card? The Lord, speak to me. We're getting a 2-3 and a very small Jade Golem, which I guess could be fine if we can then put a Flame Tongue Totem in between them. And there's Grumble. Okay, so now this is going to change things a little. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if we can get value on the Grumble, bringing back the Jade Spirit to hand, and then replaying it for one, then we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. At the moment, this is just a battle for the board. Um. Okay, so he's playing Fire Elemental. Interesting. So maybe his deck does have an elemental focus to it. Maybe we've just not uh, been exposed to it too much yet. Um, but anyway, I think we could consider Grumble here. Or maybe we can just get away with playing another Jade Spirit onto this board and just hoping that both of them survive going into the following turn. No. Grumble now seems fine. And we'll play this again and we'll get our value. So very, very slowly we are building up this, uh, this Golem army here. Slowly increasing in size. So we get a 4-4 next. Now you can see the potential for Grumble in this deck, right? If you have a board full of minions, so let's say 4-man 7-7s, seven things from below, big threats, big minions that have done some trading and they're injured. You play the Grumble, you get them all back to hand, you play them cheap. 
that's the real potential of Rumble in this deck. Um, Devolve on a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven always feels pretty good, right? Always feels pretty good. And once again, we have options in our hand. Um, it's still a board control battle. So I'm going to want to do everything I can um, to clean up the board. There's probably different ways of doing this. Developing more Jade Golems seems pretty decent. Um, I think I'd value a Healing Totem at this point if I'm going to be making more trades going forward. Here's more cards in hand. I have more minions on board. So let's see what he's got here. Let's see if he can neutralize my board. Oh wow, he's playing the Slizzle 466 version of this deck. He's playing Weaponized Pinata. Wow. Slizzle, if you are watching this, I hope you are proud. Uh, the Slizzle version, the Pinata version of Even Shaman is something I've featured on my channel previously. I had a lot of fun with that version of the deck. Um, so, for my glory. what do we want to do here? Do we just want to ignore the Pinata and let him trade with it? We get the Taunt Totem. That's pretty good here. That's pretty, pretty good because now maybe it means he can't easily kill off his Pinata uh, and get a Legendary back to hand. Uh, so yeah, we want to delay him getting a Legendary back to hand. Because he could get something good, right? <laughs> so Devolve does some work for him there, but I still have a substantial board, right? I still have a substantial board, and a Shadow Fiend in hand is pretty awesome. Floating Watcher, can I injure myself on my own turn? Ah. I mean, I do run Jade Lightning. I, I, I could Jade Lightning my own face, maybe. But um, I assume that he's going to want to try and clear up as much as he can. He's got the Jade Lightning, fair enough. But he Jade Lightning's a zero attack minion? That's interesting. I guess his focus was to kill off the Pinata and get a Legendary back to hand. Fair enough. That interaction there with the thing from below... Um, it's a bit unfortunate because I assume it would have been low cost anyway, but whatever. Um, we we don't have any kind of lethal here, so we just do our best to maintain board and go face. I'm going to save the Nimbus for some kind of an emergency draw should I need it. So, my friend there, Gerald, is saying Deathwing, um, or another Raya. Deathwing incoming is what I think. But he gets King Mosh, which actually is almost as good as Deathwing, because it's cleared most of my board. That's actually insane. Wow. Um, Weaponized Pinata is a great card, confirmed, ladies and gentlemen, confirmed. Um, but anyway. Is this game just over now? Did I miss Lethal there? Or was I one off? Gerald says I was one off. I think I may have missed lethal. Hmm. But 
Was I too focused on getting an elemental back to hand? I think I was. But it doesn't actually matter here. Because, sure, 11 attack to my face, that hurts. But we still have enough left on board. Okay, so controls even elemental shaman. Super, super fun deck to play. Um, I'm not sure at this point if it's more effective than um, the sort of traditional version of even shaman that you see on the ladder. Uh, Crackles have won me lots of games in the past. Uh, just unexpected burst damage to the face with, you know, spell power totem. It's pretty good. The problem with Crackle, though, is that... It's RNG centric, right? It's RNG focused. If you roll low, that can just ruin your day. The elemental version of even Shaman is uh, less focused on RNG with terms in terms of damage, because you damage dealing cards um, like you know Flame Tongue Totem, which enables attack power on other minions. Uh, Jade Claws, which is a weapon to the face. Jade Lightning, which is for damage. Uh, Fire Elementals three damage burst. Those things are all certain. Uh, you know exactly what to expect from those, those, those cards that can give you sudden bursts of damage, which I guess you could argue is, is better than playing crackles that are uncertain. Uh, I hope that explanation makes sense. Um, but I'm a big fan of Kalimos. Um, any excuse to use Kalimos in a deck and to play him for his flexibility is pretty good. Uh, playing Kalimos and then playing Grumble is also super good. Hagatha is another very interesting inclusion. Um, you know, you sort of see her being played a bit more in Shaman now, or in even Shaman. Uh, she is potentially a board clear, and then you can start getting value when you play minions and then get spells back to hand so Hagatha another very interesting inclusion um, perhaps helping you to gain a bit more control of the board so thank you very much for joining me everyone I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you all very soon for more well mode fun